Hello and uh, welcome to the latest episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, okay, this afternoon. I think you've probably figured out what I'm going to be tasting this afternoon. Yes, this is obviously um, part three of the, the Glenfiddich trilogy. And you think, go on, Glen, have they got that much whiskey that they, they released to do uh, three episodes of the show? Yes, indeed they do. Um, so, for this final episode of the show, we'll be looking at a range that I believe was um, initially released purely for travel retail, although I think one of them has, uh, has since been put on general release, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, that range is called the uh, Age of Discovery. Um, apparently, it's uh, supposedly a homage to ancient voyages and all that kind of thing, and all the packaging has got nice fancy boxes with maps and charts and all kind of uh, stuff going on. Um, I believe not not particularly cheap. I think um, they're around about 140 quid a bottle, something like that. Um, and um, so uh, should be should be quite interesting. So um, without much further ado, I will introduce the lineup. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, as I was saying, um, the Age of Discovery, it's all about travel and what have you, so I suppose it's quite fitting for travel retail, I suppose. Um, three uh, have been released, obviously, in, in the series, um, and uh, the first one that was released, I think, in 2011 was this one, uh, aged for 19 years in American oak casks, uh, and uh, a homage, like I said, to... Uh, the discovery of America and all that kind of stuff. So, so that should be quite interesting. Nineteen-year-old American oak. Uh, second one uh, again, nineteen years old. Uh, this particular bottling, I think, the Madeira finish was released in uh, two thousand and twelve, and is a homage to the Portuguese explorers of the fifteenth century, allegedly. Um, so, we'll see what. Uh, um, the Madeira finishing uh, gives it. I don't know how long it's been finished in uh, an ex Madeira cast, but I guess probably not much more than a year or two. I wouldn't have thought, but could be wrong. And the final uh, bottling in the range is uh, red wine finished, uh, and uh, this has been matured in um, ex South American wine casks and as a homage to uh, Charles Darwin's uh, voyage, uh, I believe. So, again, 19 years old, bottle at 40%. Uh, I don't know, again, how long it's been finished in red wine casks, but judging by the, the colour, probably not too long, I wouldn't have thought. So, so there you have it. Um, around the world with Glenn Fiddick, so to speak. So, uh, shall we crack on with the, uh, the bourbon one? Hello. Right, okay, so 19 years in American oak casks. Let's see what the nose gives us in, shall we? A lot of oak. Um, I would imagine a proportion of those oak casks probably a first fill, because you get a lot of um, soft, creamy vanillins, but it's also got a nice kind of edgy herbal kind of character. The crisp fiddic fruit is coming through. Um, it's very, very rich, very full, very, very toffied, very not overly sweet, but quite sweet. Yeah, really dense, really nice in actual fact. I like this nose. I mean, I do like American oak. I, I guess. I, no, I think it's quite it's quite nicely balanced actually. It's um it's. Yeah, there's a, there is a lot of oak. There's a lot of the sort of banana and toffee and caramel and yeah, it is quite it's quite full uh, by Glenfiddich standards, as we've seen from um, say the uh, the twelve year old and the fifteen year old, um, and to a certain extent the um, the eighteen as well uh, tended to be quite quite fresh in character. But this is big, chunky. Hmm. Yeah, quite appealing. Palette. Mm. 
It's soft, chewy, big. Again, a lot of American oak vanillins, toffee, caramel, a little bit of cream. Um, the phytic fruit is sort of there, it's some apricots, and it's kind of, you know, trying to come through. I think if that had been bottled maybe at 43, uh, that little bit extra alcohol might have sort of done more of a clearing job, certainly on the finish, uh, and sort of taken away, you know, cleared up the, the oak and sort of allowed the sort of like the crisp fruit to come through. Nice, soft, spicy finish. Um, yeah, okay, it's 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 a nice it's a nice pleasant whiskey. Um, no off notes, quite full, like I said for for Glenfiddich. Um, so so yeah, not not too shabby as they say. Right, okay, let's uh, have a look at uh, the Madeira then, shall we? Now that is that is a lovely nose, and um, I remember when I when I tasted these for the the World Whiskey Awards. Um, I mean, I didn't obviously know what they were. This was certainly one of the uh, the, the whiskies in this particular category, uh, the thirteen to twenty that I really really rated. And this is a lovely nose. Herbal, edgy, dried fruits, dried apricot, a little bit of prune, licorice. White licorice, herbal, and dusty. It's got got some some nice maturity to it. The American oak that's underneath that that Madeira finish, the sort of the honey sort of character, has has got some got some nice maturity to it. Okay, you can argue there's not a huge amount of of well, distillery character. I mean, there is some some crisp barley and uh, soft spices, but and it it is probably more about the the finishing cask, but I mean I like this. I mean I think this has got a really nice balance, probably more a balance of of age I think rather than say a balance of of wood and distillery character. Mm, I just love that sort of herbal fresh top note. Mm. I mean it's a big one again. I mean it's certainly a lot of oak going on here. So I mean if you were to sort of go. For buy this particular whiskey you'd have to bear in mind that you know you'd need to like sort of whiskies that display a lot of oak character but yeah it's got that oh, I just love that herbal character it's really 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 impressive about Just glides across the tongue. That is absolutely gorgeous. Um, again, full, soft. Um, it's got a, a lovely kind of um, not honey and um, golden syrup. And it just kind of glides across the, across the palate. Touch of dried fruit, some apricot again. Um, a little bit of grape. Um, touch of touch of, uh, of herbalness again um, a little bit of dusty uh, oak right on the finish just a little bit again like I said you don't get a huge amount of sort of, uh, of the of the fiddic character it's more about the combination of, 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 uh, of the, the different oaks I mean I'm guessing um, certainly from tasting it it was obviously uh, originally aged in uh, American oak before being finished in um, uh, Eckert's Madeira casks um, and I think sort of the balance between the, the, the use of casks is really really good um, like I said really mouthful and really big juicy mm, yeah yeah impressive <laughs> and last but not least let's have a look at the uh, red wine finish then let's see what the nose gives us It's edgy, slightly, slightly perfumed, slightly syrupy red fruits. More freshness, actually, more distillery character coming through on on this on the nose. It's got a nice barley and crisp, almost granity note. 
touch of toffee. Yeah, some 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 nice some nice uh, red wine notes going on. Uh, a little bit of black currant, red currant maybe. Touch of spice. Edgy, brittle. Mmm, kind of. I th to be honest with you, I didn't really rate this particularly highly when when I first tasted this for the uh, for the World Whiskey Awards. I guess it's the the way these things tend to go when you've got quite a large number of samples to kind of work your way through and you've probably maybe tasted one or two prior uh, that have either been exceptionally good or exceptionally bad it doesn't necessarily cloud your judgment but it's kind of has a bit of a knock-on effect and actually tasting this now or nosing this should we say for a second time I actually find this quite appealing although it is hard as nails it has to be said um, but it's got some nice dusty spices and like I said, probably more um, distillery character than, than the other two. Palette. It's an interesting palette. I mean, it's more about the plummy, jammy red fruits and spice and sort of syrup coated red fruits and less about the, 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 the distillery character. It's a bit kind of, again, it's a bit hard. It kind of stops, you know, um, you get all this, this red wine finish um, and suddenly it just kind of stops and you've got some quite hard barley and granity kind of uh, notes on the finish it's a bit I mean it's fine it's okay I mean uh, it I think I'm probably um, I think it does reinforce what I thought of it the first the first time I tasted it certainly when I'm tasting it that it's a bit heavy-handed I think um, but you know the quality is pretty good there's no off notes from the oak at all um, it's got a nice dusty spiciness but it just kind of leaves me a little bit cold but then I probably guess that sort of you know red wine finishes really have to impress me you know I, I've again I find them um, quite difficult not difficult to get on with they're, they're, they they they're difficult to balance you know you, it's it's very easy to go one way or the other with uh, with with red wine cask finishing uh, whiskies but you know I, I don't think it's a bad whiskey um, just think it's kind of you know not quite right not quite there but that's just my personal opinion so anyway um sum them up then right okay so uh let's sum this little tasting up then um the uh the age of discovery board but yeah it's it, it's pleasant um like I said, a lot of oak, probably some of it sort of first fill American oak. Um, big, rich, very impressive nose. Um, yeah, and pleasant, you know. Again, like I was saying when, when I tasted it, not exactly a, a, a huge amount of distillery character, but, um, you know, a pleasant whiskey nevertheless. Um, the Madeira finish, I, I really like that. Um, I kind of like Madeira finished uh, whiskies. It kind of... They tend to give you a, a sweetness. They maybe add a little bit of sort of dried fruit, but they, well, they maybe not so much in this case. Tend to sort of blanket the um, um, the, the, the whiskey. But I mean, certainly, the, the, like I was saying, this is pretty much all about the American oak and the, and and the um, um, Madeira oak. Um, but they're, they're pretty versatile. They seem to me, you know, that I've, I've tasted a number of uh, whiskies that have been finished in uh, ex Madeira casks and. Um, yeah, you know, pretty much most of the time they, they work really well. I mean, the, the Penderin distillery uh, is a classic example of, uh, of of that type of maturation. The uh, uh, Madeira cask adds a little bit of sweetness uh, to the to the to the malt, but the malt has got enough kind of crisp character to kind of stand up to that sort of um, finishing. So, but anyway, coming back to this one, yeah, really really impressive. Big whiskey, um, really expressive. Um, my personal favourite out of all three of them, I think. 
um, the, the red wine finish. Um, like uh, like I was saying, I, I like the nose. I thought the nose was, was showed an awful lot better than the last time I tasted it. Um, a lot more of the distillery character coming through, which is probably what I wasn't expecting from a red wine finish, it has to be said. The palate, no, I didn't think was quite up to, up to uh, the, the nose. It certainly kind of stopped short. It kind of, you know, you tasted it, you got all this red wine and it finished like, it just felt like kind of hitting a brick wall and suddenly, oh, there, right, right, red wine finishes stopped and now we're going to get some, some whiskey character. Um, I, I guess there are a lot of people who are really, really like that. For me, it, it was just, it just seemed a little bit heavy handed by uh, uh, Glen Phillips standards. So, um, so there you have it. That's that's the uh, the end of uh, this trilogy of uh, of, of tastings of uh, Glen I mean, I I hope you've enjoyed um, listening to me waffle away about uh, about Glen and I promise that it'll probably be a while before I do another one on Glen I've got quite a few more uh, um, tastings uh, up my sleeve, so to speak. Or well, yeah. As it goes um, to, to share with you, and Glenfiddich is probably uh, I probably overdosed on it now for 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 um, one lifetime. Um, but no, I mean I th I think sort of it, being serious. Uh, I think, like I said back in the the, the first of the three uh, episodes that, that I did, that yeah, Glenfiddich has a little bit of a reputation for being boring, for being entry level, for being run of the mill, for sort of stuff you start on. Um, and I don't think that's particularly warranted. Yes, all right, it is a kind of start a mole, and, and that I don't think is is a bad thing. I think um, right the way through the range, you know, from the twelve, right the way through to the uh, the thirty eight year old, um, Glenfiddich is a class model. It is a classy product, um, and certainly with age, it is pretty pretty impressive. It has to be said, um, and. You know, I must admit, I don't think I've really tasted a, a, a you know, what I would consider to be a, a poor Glenfiddich. I mean, this is probably the my least favourite of all of the uh, uh, the ones that I've tasted over the last three episodes. But, you know, um, I don't think you'd be sort of, you know, you pick up a bottle of Glenfiddich and I think, you know, you can be quite, quite sure in the quality of what you're going to get in the bottle, whether it's, um, whether you buy it in... A supermarket whiskey shop or whether you buy in travel retail you know I think you, you can't go wrong with it you know the, the, the quality is seems to be um, you know pretty much there you know they don't seem to foist off the uh, the crap shall we say onto the travel retail market unlike some distilleries so that's a good thing but anyway that's that's enough about me waffling for, for this episode of the show so uh, all that's left to say is um, get your Madeira go traveling and Good afternoon.